Number five, describe the transformations needed to translate the graph of y equals 1 over x to this graph here. So just remember that um, when we did quadratics, we had an h and a k. Okay, but when you have rational functions that have a 1 over x, um, you have an h and a k as well. And what that means is the whole parent function, which looks like this, remember it has those asymptotes there, this whole thing just gets shifted. All right, and so that shift is here. It's the same principles that we did with the quadratics. This would mean a left of 3, and this would mean a down of 4. Okay, and that would be D. So just remember, uh, the H and the K are just like back in the day when you had this uh, H squared plus the K. All right, same thing. Just you had a U shape instead of like this, you know, two curves. All right, so we're going to try to squeeze this in on this uh, on this paper here. Um, we're looking for a common denominator. All right, um, so um, once we get a GCF, we'll be able to do that. Now, I see a 2, and these guys are 6s, so it's much easier for me to try to convert this to a uh, 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. Okay, so now it's a 6, okay? Now, he's got two n's, he has one, he has two. So it looks like the GCF here would be 6n squared, so I need to give this guy an n. Okay, and now that they're all equal, all right, what we can say is, as long as my n doesn't equal 0, I'm going to be okay. Um, 0 would produce 0 in the denominator, so n cannot equal 0. Okay, but it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen anyway, because... What happens is I'm going to just focus in the numerator here and solve like I would something from the seventh grade, right? I'm going to put the n over to the other side, and that's going to be I'm the one over negative one over to the other side, and that'll be four. So it looks like my final answer is four. And what I'll do is I'll just double check. Four is not going to produce zero in any instance of it being uh, of, it, of it being four. So my final answer would just be b. Ah, oh, those only two minutes. We'll do one more. Uh, let's see. So, again, uh, same principle here. We want a common denominator so we can pretty much uh, get rid of the all of the denominator, basically even the playing field, so that we really won't see any more fractions. We'll just can all look at it in terms of a numerator. So uh, 4x looks like the greatest common factor that these all can be because... That one, the large one, just has a one underneath it, and this one just has an x. So if we we can bump everything up to a four x, and so this guy is going to stay the same, uh, but this one will have to have a four times an x, and this one will just need a four. Okay, and what we've done is we've made it all over four x now because they're all on the equal. They've equal. They've been equally partitioned. All right, so let's distribute and see what happens here. We get 3 plus 3x equals 4x minus 4. So I'm going to move this 3x over to here. So that negative 3x, negative 3x, I end up with 1x minus 4. And then I'm going to add 4 to both sides. All right, and x equals 7. And the only problem that would give me 0 in the denominator here is if x was 0. So can't have that. All right. Now, I will do 8 just because this is a quick one. It looks complicated, but it's not actually. So one of the things you can do here is, well, you can look at it in the same way that we did number 6 and 7, right? Um, we can actually take this and move it over here because this 1, if it had a common denominator of this, why don't we just give that? All right, I don't know if that makes any sense there, but if I just give x squared minus 6x uh, to that 1, okay, and I'm going to write it out just, just to kind of show you what that means here. Okay, now what I did is I gave the 1 the x squared minus 6x plus 8. And 
this is 1, because everything, this is the same trinomial, so those cancel out, but that is 1. But what we've done is, we've actually evened the playing field. So just like we cross those out, just like we were able to cross those out, we can cross this out, because everything is even. So notice what really happened. We cross multiply. 1 times this equals that. And it is able to go in the numerator over on the opposite side of the equal sign. So what you've got is um, two quadratics equaling each other. And you just basically are going to figure out where they intersect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, um, I'm actually going to need a little bit more room. So let's do that. Where are we at? Five minutes? Oh, it's not bad. Um, so x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals x squared plus 3x minus 16. Um, notice, well, uh, if I subtracted x squared from both sides, uh, it's gone. Okay, all right, so now we got negative 6x plus 8 equals 3x minus 16. Let's move the x's over here. You could have moved the six over, negative 6 over there, doesn't matter. Um, so we got negative 9x plus 8 equals negative 16. We're going to move this guy over to here. All right. And so divide by negative 9. And x equals, that would be a, what, 3 goes into both of those. So they're both negative, so it's positive. Uh, 3 to 8, so 8 over 3. Okay, now that's all fine, but what we want to make sure is that we understand that for this one, we can't have zeros in this denominator. Now I'm pretty sure I'm not going to see 8 over 3 as... Um, the possibility here. Is that even factorable? Are there factors? Uh, yes. x uh, minus 2 and x minus 4. Okay. So that right there, I can't have positive 2, I can't have positive 4. But my answer came out to be 8 over 3. Now I'm just going to take a second to double check. Alright, so I just want to make sure I don't want to make a mistake. I have to redo the video or something. Did I write it down right? Good. Okay. Yeah, it looks good to me. Eight over three. All right. Final answer.